Hi friends, I'm Caitlin. Welcome back to Pink and Main's YouTube or Facebook, wherever you're joining me from. I am so excited that you came to hang out. We're going to have so much fun. Tonight, I'm going to be sharing with you a sneak peek of some of the, a couple, we'll say a couple of the new release items that are coming out this Friday. Um, so if you didn't know, March is Pink and Main's birthday month. And so every year, at least that I'm aware of, March is full of birthday and celebration stamps, dyes, embossing folders, and stencils as part of their release that month. So I do have two of those new items here to share with you. And we're actually going to be using them to make two cards. We're going to do the same um, technique and get two cards out of it since while we have everything out. I figured why not, right? So let's go ahead and jump right on in. Hey, yeah, if you're joining and jumping in, definitely leave me a comment so I can, I know everybody's here. All right, so I do have two top folding A2 size card bases to start out with. I have two panels of the ice rink cardstock that I trimmed down to five and a quarter by four. So when we layer that on, it's just gonna give me a really small, nice little white frame border all the way around. And then, you know, I couldn't not do foil, right? The foil, the mink is still on pre-order. Um, the foils and the foilables and everything are all out now, but the OG, this must have come out when Michelle was first figuring out that this was going to happen. Um, and I had played with it a few times before I even knew there were going to be pink and mean foils. And I love it. So this is the black and white pattern paper pack. It's just like a normal pattern paper six by six pack from them that you can get. And I've also used these as just black and white, but they are printed with toner. So you can foil them. I'm so excited that you caught me live. Here I am. Um, <laughs> so we are going to foil this one. I thought it was fun. It's a little bit of a graphic print, but also kind of reminds me of like sprinkles or confetti. So that's what I was thinking with this one. So we're going to just do one of those and we're going to cut it down so that it works for our two cards. And we're going to start with that. Um, and then we'll show, I'll show you some newness in just a second. So for my foil, I decided to bring in this beautiful rainbow. Oh my God. It's so, it has such an impact. It's a very bright, very fun. And I am going to trim this down so that it's just a little bit bigger than my paper. Set that to the side. I am going to use a tiny bit of tape just because I don't have my mink quite yet. Um, so I'm going to be using a laminator and it just doesn't work quite the same pressure wise. So, but with these papers specifically, I've had the least issues when I've been um, using the laminator. So, okay. And then I have a little piece of parchment. I did plug my laminator in about, um, all right, the pink mink. I'm so excited. I did plug my laminator in about mm, 20 minutes ago. So <laughs> it should be hot enough. We're going to lay that down. Let's see if I can get this situated. You always want to make sure. I'm pretty sure I just did this upside down now that I'm thinking about it. We're going to we're going to find out. I might have done it right. I think I did it right. Oof. The live the live life is hard, guys. We're going to find out in a second. I'm pretty sure I did it right. That the pretty side of the foil goes up. So Either way, we're gonna put that to the side and let it cool for a minute. And I will tell you a little more about the plan for the rest of the card. 
So the other item I grabbed to do our background with is this. This is the fireworks embossing folder. I love this. It is beautiful. And my thought was that I'm going to emboss the white panel with the firework kind of like that, right? And then we'll put the foil about halfway and then put the um, sentiment in the middle. And that way we can do a whole card. Now that I'm thinking about it, I should just cut it, right? And we'll do a whole card. I don't know about the bottom. We'll figure that part out when we get there. But yeah, so that's your first sneak peek, the firework embossing folder. We're definitely gonna be using that. Let's see. All right, so you can see, I can already tell you, we're gonna have some issues because you can see I have the wrinkles in my foil. So I did do it the right way up. So that's exciting. Oh, and you know what? The foil, the wrinkles, how perfect. They only messed up like one or two sprinkles. And you really can't tell. Well, that's perfect. And we have that beautiful rainbow. And I'm like 99.999% sure that the wrinkle has more to do with me not using an actual mink too, just for the record. So I am gonna save my negative because now I, even with the wrinkle, especially this side doesn't have any, I'm gonna take uh, one of the full toner sheets, either the color or the black, and trim it and lay that down. And then we'll get all of this foil onto a panel that I can use for something fun with that little cut out. Although it's kind of fun see-through. We'll see. Okay. So that's our foil piece. Unplug that laminator. We'll set that to the side. Let's go ahead and get our embossing folder panels taken care of. I also wanna throw it out there that if you love the sneak peeks, you should definitely be checking out the Pink and Main blog this week because the whole design team does a sneak peek posts the week leading up to the release every month. So now is the time. All right. So I am just going to line that up. Try to make sure it's straight-ish, straight enough. We're gonna put the top one down. And run that like through. Back. There you go. And look at that beautiful tone on tone firework. And the fun thing with these is you can do the deboss side or emboss side or the deboss side. I love that. Beautiful. Let's do the same thing with the other panel. Maybe we'll do one of each. We'll do one embossed and one debossed since we're making two cards. Thing out of the way. Perfect. Oh, 
Okay. So I think I'm going to leave these whole. And what we're going to do is trim down just the foil panel for our backgrounds. And that way I don't have to worry about lining everything up perfect. Yeah, let's figure out how. Thinking like that. That much showing out of the top. And that is. Okay. Come on, Caitlin. Ish. I just need an ish. Um, two, we're going to say two and three quarters. We want two panels that are two and three quarters. And you know I'm saving that because even that little strip is going to be adorable on something else later that goes up in the scraps in. And then these are four inches wide. And I'd rather them be a little long than a little short because we can always trim them from the back of the panel too. All right, so let's get these into place. So I already know that I'm gonna pop up my sentiment with foam. So I'm going to adhere my foil panels down flat. So now kind of instead of a Firework, we're going to create more of like a sunrise, I guess. By covering up this half. And I like using my easy squeeze glue just because it gives me more time to shift everything around and make sure that I'm happy. And I did remember that I'm doing one with the emboss side and one with the deboss side. However, those work. One's an innie, one's an outie. Impression. Okay. So yeah. There's one, you can see that beautiful reflection. And then the other one, good to go. So I know these look very, even though they have the rainbow at the bottom, it's a lot of white space. And I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna attach them to our card base now so they're ready to go. But the real pop and wow and support factor for our foil, is going to come from our sentiment. So there are some beautiful image stamp sets coming out with this release, but I really wanted to play with the sentiment set first. It does have candles, I can tell you that. And as soon as I get this adhered, I will show you the whole stamp set. Um, but I'm extra excited because the calligraphy and everything is done by um, Mommy Lay, who is the other, my, my live Pink and Main Live cohort. <laughs> she has been doing lives from abroad and she's so inspiring and her calligraphy is absolutely stunning. And so this is the stamp set we're gonna use. We're gonna use the Make-A-Wish and Happy Birthday. So this is called the It's a Celebration. And obviously it has that beautiful It's a Celebration banner. You get the little confetti pieces, you get the candles, 
Um, we're just using the sentiments today, but my favorite, if you've watched these with me before, you know I love a sentiment with a coordinating die. So we are gonna be using those. And to try to save us a little time and arm workout, I already am, um, I already die cut my cardstock that we're gonna be using for our stamping. But you know, I don't, it wouldn't, it would be cool to just stamp them in a color, but it would be cooler to stamp them in three colors. So what I'm thinking matches really well into this blue, purple, pink, teal combination in the middle of our rainbow is some pink, maybe blue and teal ink. So we're gonna do a ink blended sentiment for both. A little ombre. And I'm thinking we're gonna do the Make-A-Wish ombre down and the happy birthday ombre across because why not hi from michigan i'm so excited hi i don't know if i remember seeing a michigan before i also saw georgia i'm assuming ri is rhode island if i'm wrong about that you let me know The cool thing about doing your die cuts first is I'm. It feel like it's easier to line up your lettering because you can make sure that like, you're gonna have to excuse my head a little bit. That looks pretty good to me. one down and these are new so they're very sticky stickier than my backer teeth i'm going to go ahead and rub my hand over that fresh stamp as well that will just help to get some of the oils off of my hand and onto the stamp we want it sticky, but we don't want that little bit of layer that's left from the stamp um, manufacturers. It'll resist the ink a little bit. So I am using it in my stamping platform just so that I have that extra insurance in case I do need to go over everything again. Good. And each time I'm just taking the magnet off and re-pushing my panel into the corner so that I know it is where it needs to be. To do my blending on my edges, I grabbed one of the mini ergonomic. Oh, Vegas, Vegas is in the house and Ohio, Illinois. This is, that's a lot of states, guys. We're filling up fast. I know Vegas is a state, but you know what I mean. Um, okay. So I grabbed my mini ergonomic brush and we're gonna use that to tap out the color. So I think for happy birthday, I'm gonna start with the pink on the left. And so all I'm doing, sorry, I that glare there, that's a little better. I'm gonna stamp about a, half, a third of the way across and then I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm kind of just like, doing little flicking motions and dragging a little bit of that ink towards the part that's not inked yet, that I didn't stamp. Right, and you can see how we're already starting to get that beautiful fade. I'm going to do that a second time, not taking my ink quite as far over this time because I'm more focusing on getting these edges really nice and clean. Perfect. Love that. I'm gonna go in with a stamp chamois. And it's okay if your stamp stain a little bit, it's just the, the ink, the, um, 
Wow, words are hard today. It's just the dye and the ink. <laughs> really good quality ink has a lot of pigmentation to it. And so it just, that's what it wants to do. It wants to just grip. So I'm using the edge of my ink pad and I'm kind of stamping on an angle so that I'm not getting the whole um, sentiment. It just gives me more control. So I'm just tilting it to the side a little bit. Going in with Barbershop, I'm going to just wipe my brush a little bit on my um, lint-free microfiber towel. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm flicking my color. That went a little further than I would have liked it. So I'm just going to wipe off the blue off of that H. But I'm just flicking the color from where I stamped it onto that blank section on both sides this time. Beautiful. Love that. Do it a second time again. Really focusing that color on the very center. And then just little taps on those edges to pull it out. Wiping off my H. Oh, I love that. Let me zoom in. There we go. Squeaky. You can see how crazy pigmented that blue is. And I'm not worried about getting like a deep clean on my brush. I just want to make sure I'm getting enough pigment off. Um, that I can blend out the next color without depositing extra blue. Okay, and then this last one section is the teal. And that's going to be mostly the Y's at the end. Just flicking it over. Keep magnet in the way. Oh, yeah, Stacey. It, um, I didn't for a long time either, but I love it. I love how you, it gives you so much impact and you can really let your sentiment be kind of the star of the whole card. If you're having a day where you're not feeling like coloring or you don't, maybe you just don't have time to do a, like a detailed coloring or a scene or whatever, um, doing an ombre, even if it's just two colors and not the three, depending on the size of it, you could do like a whole rainbow. So yeah, that is so pretty. That's our first sentiment. So just in case, I'm gonna go ahead and pop that out and set it to the side to dry while we get inky with the Make-A-Wish. And I'm gonna do the same colors. I'm just gonna go from top to bottom this time instead, I think because I really love how these colors specifically work with the rainbow and the foil. Pink and Main's inks so far are not like exactly, right, a, a true like red, yellow, blue. They're, the, it's definitely like a pink, a navy, and the yellow is a little of like an orangey yellow. So I didn't wanna go for like true full Roy G. Biv rainbow because I just felt it wasn't gonna match that foil but these specific colors match perfectly with those corresponding shades in. In the um, foil. Let's do the opposite way though. We'll start with our teal first. How about that? So teal on the top. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you guys like it and think it's pretty. I think it's really fun. And it's almost like 
a little bit like tie dye, like you don't know <laughs> exactly how it's going to turn out until it's done. And I love tie dye. This would also be something that'd be really easy to bulk make, especially if you were using um, like a sheet like this, where you could just have a ton pre die cut and pop them into into the same place and leave your stamp where it is. That would be super fast if you wanted to get a ton done and just keep them stored to the side for when you needed a good little sentiment. So we're going to go back to our blue. Again, I'm holding my ink pad at an angle, just using that little corner edge. And I'm trying to keep an eye on how far I came down so that I know how high I need to drag my blue. And this one is super cute because the eye in Wish is a little candle flame. Oh, I love it so much. And it's okay if you feel like you don't get the smoothest blend on that first go around. So you can see I miss that big old gap. I have a big gap on that middle section. Okay. Get ink everywhere. So I need to take my blue higher. better, but it's still not great. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go in with a tiny bit more of a teal and drag that down. Over. Again. And I don't know about you guys, but if I'm ink blending with a brush, this whole back and forth is pretty much just part of my routine. So it makes sense that it would be the same for a sentiment. There we go. Much better. Me too, Stacey, right? I want the my pink mink with my pink towel and all my pink stuff, which is only funny because in real life, everything I own is black. But when it comes to stamping stuff, I am a sucker <laughs> for some pink and mink pink stuff. And I don't mind if the pink really bleeds high up into that blue because it's just going to give us a really beautiful purple. There we go. I think that one was pretty good on the first go. That's my gift from the universe for not giving up <laughs> on the other ones. All right. Squeaky clean that guy. And we'll get those to the side later. So I'm just gonna pop my mini brush back into my stand and I'll clean it afterwards, but this way the bottom isn't getting ink on anything, let alone everything. We're gonna pull that sentiment back out. And I am just gonna <laughs> Spray my fingers really quick with some water because they are very blue. It's from wiping the H's clean and picking up an inky rag. Inky. Okay, good enough. Okay. 
So I have the birthday and we have the make a wish and we have our panels. So I'm thinking just like that. Oh, I love it. And I'm gonna pop them up with some foam to make sure that they really stand out. And then of course, foil wasn't enough. We have to add some bling. So let's go ahead and get some foil trimmed. Not foil, foam, foam trimmed. We did the foils already. Hey, Kendra, it's okay. I'm just glad you made it. These lives are like the only thing I'm not late to. In my, in my, so I understand. Let's go ahead and get this guy. Trash can. Look at how funny. Oh, it's an actual little trash can for my desk. It makes me laugh so hard every time I use it. From Australia, is it already tomorrow? It has to be tomorrow. It's already basically tomorrow here. That's so exciting. We have international friends. I'm gonna pop that into place. So I did not foil with glimmer plates. I used the toner foil, the cheer foil from Pink and Main that just released the beginning of this month. And I used um, the foil type that I use, Kendra, is the colors in the description. It's like streak rainbow. Rainbow streak, stripe rainbow, something like that. It's Wednesday lunchtime. You're in the future. That's so exciting. That's so funny to me how that works. Um, but yeah, definitely check the description. No matter where you're watching this from, I put a link to it there for you for the foil exact color name. Um, but I used one of the six by six white and black pattern paper that looks like this because these are printed with toner and so these are completely foilable as well so i ran this with my foil through a laminator um and at some point i will have my very own pink mink and we'll switch over to that because my lam my laminator has seen better days guys but i am very excited that uh, Pink and Main went the toner and mink route versus the glimmer and the foil plates because I just, I, I think they're beautiful. I just would be so worried I'd burn myself. I'm that kind of crafter. Like if there's hot glue around, it's on me. So. All right, and then for just a little bit of extra bling, I don't want to go <laughs> too crazy. So I grabbed the Cool Jellies Gems, and I'm just going to do the iridescent white. It has this beautiful, like, pink, blue, like, purpley shift to it. So that is what I'm going to use. And let's, we'll just do a trial run on one of these. I'm thinking five. So we need one down pretty low. Maybe one over there. Mm. 
My, um, mm -mm. I don't know. That's not working. Maybe six, we'll do three and three. Yeah, I like that. So it's just like a little, a little thing gold. Just adding a little dot of glue, popping my little gem right on top. Why not? Stay. Maybe blue. There we go. All right, there's one. This one. Should I use one Guys, it's been a really long week and it's only Tuesday. <laughs> but that is what I love about crafting and card making. It's kind of a nice escape. It's something to kind of take my brain off of everything else and just have fun and play with some glitter and sparkles. Let's do this one the other way. I'm just going for it this time. Nothing like just committing by going straight in with your glue. There we go. All right. So just like that, we have two fun, but still moderately clean, right? It's a good balance with all of the white space. These really fun and reflective, happy celebration cards. Make a wish and happy birthday. And we got to play with foils and inks and newness. So definitely keep an eye out on the blog, on Pink and Main's blog, because there are going to be even more sneak peeks coming. There we go. A ton of sneak peeks coming all week leading up until Friday for the new release. I'll have a blog post up tomorrow at five, and then I will be back here with you on Thursday to look at a couple more new things and play with them for our Thursday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern live. So excited. Um, oh, I'm glad you guys like them. I think these are very different, a different style card for me. I'm pretty sure on Thursday, we're gonna jump back into Copic coloring because if you know me at this point, you know that I love to color. And so today was interesting and fun to take a break, but I am ready to get back into my markers on Thursday with you. So I will be back. I will see you then. Thank you so much for coming to hang out with me. Make sure that you hit subscribe or follow no matter what platform you're on. And I will see you on Thursday. Happy crafting.